this is uh, Kevin Mahoney from Raging Chicken Press, um, and I am so excited to be up here in Wilkesbury today um, with over 700, at uh, least confirmed, we know that there's one sprouting up all over the place, 700 actions across the country today. Yes, um, to keep Yes, to keep families together. I was so psyched that I know it's coming up to the mountains, and I looked up here, and sure enough, here we are in Wilkesbury, uh, and kind of checking out. we got a great turnout here so far. Um, the event's going to start pretty soon. So tell us a little bit about kind of like oh, what brought you here together um, and uh, a little bit about the organizing that went involved in getting this together today. Well, the organizing was very much me reaching out to Move On, our representative for Move On, Amanda, who has been fantastic in organizing all of this actually. I came down to getting the proper speakers to represent our voices being heard as a, a county that has gone red in the last election, which has been notoriously blue. So, you know, just kind of doing this is sparking the outrage and getting everybody up and running. Uh, but really, the planning has been very easy. The city was fantastic to work with, and you know, the turnout is even better. It's better than what we can imagine, and actually the age ranges that are showing up makes me so happy. It makes me more hopeful for the next election. Yeah, as I walked in here, I saw folks that were kind of, you know, clearly kind of like seniors, and I saw folks here that looks like they're maybe just out of high school. So, I mean, this is an incredible turnout. It's a nice, diverse age range, and it shows that this is an issue. The immigration issue goes from all different age points. You, we cannot ignore this anymore. Nobody can sit by, by idly. This, uh, this will look like a dark day in our American history if we allow this to ca keep happening. Yeah, and this looks like pretty much, we're at the point right now which we're at the baseline of, of what, what what are we as a country? Who are we as a Absolutely. country? Absolutely. And cannot kind of like put it off on our government or anything and it's up to us as the people, I think, <laughs> really to kind of say like, okay, this is the direction that we're going to go. This is the kind of community that we want. Absolutely. This, this right here is showing you that this area, despite going red, it is progressive. It is liberal. There are people who care about our neighbors. Wilkesbury is has a very high immigration population, an immigrant population. So, you know, we're here to support our other citizens, our citizens of Luzerne County. Well, you know, one of the things that we talk a lot about, um, again, I know that you're new to what Raging Chicken Press and yes. things like this. One of the things we like to talk a lot about on our podcast and we write a lot about is about the fact that so for so long, especially in the state of Pennsylvania, we've seen the Democratic Party has kind of shunk, kind of moved away from uh, many, many areas across this state, right? That um, And it's basically written them off and basically, listen, we don't need to deal with this. And, you know, now we see some rebirth of that. What we saw with uh, the elections out in Pittsburgh, right, with Sarah and Murado and Summer Lee, with Linda Fiedler down. In, uh, in, um, in Philadelphia, and John Fetterman is kind of coming up. Uh, this is kind of, I think, a moment like to reclaim some of the roots of these areas, right? We cannot forget Connor Lamb, who, Connor took, Lamb, who took Allegheny County all the way to back to blue again. I mean, and that was an undertaking and a half. You know, right now, this is sparking something. You know, 2018, between, you know, the March for Our Lives, the Women's March, this is a year of revolution. This is, we want resistance. We're resisting our government now, and they have to listen to us. It's happening in small towns and big cities. We're not happy. There's a lot of unrest. Well, fantastic. Well, tell us a little bit about, like, so what is the, what's the uh, kind of actions plan for today? What do we expect to see here today? Today's goal is really to spark activism and ownership of everyone's community. Uh, this is our community. We have to speak up. We need to allow our government to know that we are not happy with it. We need our government to know that this no longer stands. And this, hopefully, will take to the polls come November. Excellent. Well, hey, thanks for taking a little time with us. Thank and uh, um, I'm so psyched that this is such an amazing I'm action so for today. I'm so excited about this turnout already. This is is great. Well, thanks for all your work. Thank you. Yeah, this is going to be good. Okay. Oh. Oh. So, I'll have to be my own uh, microphone. Yeah. So, childhood trauma has long-lasting effects. And as I said, I started out as a community pediatrician. And there's a principal in community pediatrics that all children are our children. There's no such thing as other people's children. They are children, our children. And what we know is that what's happening at the border and to all of our children who have been spread out around the country is that 
they are being traumatized and experiencing toxic stress. Now, facts matter. Especially evidence-informed scientific facts. And what we know is when you separate children and you impose a severe trauma and toxic chronic stress, it causes irreparable harm. Now when we say trauma, we're not just using that word to kind of say it's really bad. I'm talking about diagnosable, medically recognized, fits criteria to be reimbursed by insurance company, <laughs> trauma. Now, we've been hearing a lot of different scenarios. I've been talking to my colleagues, pediatric colleagues, who work at the border, and they've been doing this for a long time, way before this hit the news. And what we know is these children are experiencing trauma after trauma after trauma. I say thank you, not just for the introduction. I say thank you for being a true American, for being here today, for standing up for people like our former family members, our relatives, our immigrants, our family that came here. Those family members, my family members, would not have been allowed into this great country if this president was president then. My family had no great talent. His family wouldn't have been allowed. <laughs> I think all of us can go back in our family history and realize the family that we came from, most of us were just regular, ordinary, hardworking, wonderful people who wanted to be free, who wanted the idea of democracy, who wanted the idea that each person meant something. That's why America has been the beacon. That's why. That Statue of Liberty. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddle masses. That's who we are. That's why we are the greatest country in the world. That's why we are the richest country in the world. That's why we are the most powerful country in the world. Because we did not pick and choose who would be king. We didn't want a king. We wanted democracy. We wanted the people to choose their representatives and hold them accountable. Hold them accountable. But what has happened? How could this be happening here in the United States of America? A child? You're going to take a child from a mother, a father? I am a father. I'm a grandfather. I'm an uncle. I would go insane. Where's my child? Where's my grandchild? Where's my niece or nephew? Of course we have to protect our borders. Of course we do. We can protect the borders without having to separate children. And then, the audacity of not even knowing where they were, who they are, that's not America. Don't we are far better than out. that. We are far better than that. There is more good than there is evil.